wife basically said, hey, can you make Nargisi Kofte? And I said, what is Nargisi Kofte? And then I did some research. Nargisi Kofte is boiled eggs wrapped in minced meat. Traditionally, it used to be lamb. We are gonna be using uh, about an 85-15 turkey. You wrap it, you add a bunch of spices in it, and then you have the option of either deep frying it, baking it, air frying it, as you please. The spices are traditional salt, red pepper, turmeric, coriander powder, rock salt, amchur, which is dried mango powder, whole cloves and whole black peppers, bay leaves, and some exotic spices, black cardamom, these are larger cardamoms, mace, and star anise. For the meat, you're gonna be using chapli kebab or sikh kebab masala, and for the gravy, you're gonna use either karhai uh, paneer or the traditional, my favorite meat masala. Traditional Indian cuisine means red onions, tomatoes, ginger and garlic, lots of it. Saute them, deep brown, and then we're gonna mix them together. It'll give a nice caramelized onion gravy. Uh, what is gonna be the protein? All right, protein is gonna be these boiled eggs. We're gonna take these eggs, we're gonna wrap them with a mince of turkey. It's an 85-15 turkey. You can choose lamb, you can choose beef, whatever works for you. Just the way you make meatball, it's just gonna be slightly different with a few more spices than what a meatball would have. Have a knife. Oh. Ta-da! Onions are done. Now it's gonna be tomato. Where did the tomato go? Right here. Ah. All right, let's start with the ginger, the garlic, and the chilies. And let's go samurai on it. We'll give it a little more chopping. Ginger garlic done. What about the chilies? Well, you know what, today I'm gonna put the chilies whole and we got a bit of mint to top everything off. All right, now we're gonna peel the boiled eggs. <sighs> All right, so preparation is done. So what's the next step? Well, we're gonna take the meat, we're gonna add a bit of spices to it and then we're gonna put it on top of the eggs and we're gonna start baking them. So we have the turkey. Let's mix some spices in it and get it ready for baking. Salt, rock salt, lots of red chili powder, the amchur, bit of turmeric, a lot of coriander powder. I wanna try a little bit of this store one as well. Okay, so we get a very flavorful meat. Mix it well. Ginger and garlic, half of it. I have my gloves on because we're gonna have to take them in our palms and roll over the eggs. About this much, because we got about six eggs, so what I have to do is make sure I am kneading it well and I'm gonna have to spread it well. Take the egg and and keep spreading till the egg is fully covered. And when you start seeing the smoothness on the surface, that's when you know it is ready. Try to make it as round as possible and just roll it off your hand. So that's all you need. Uh, the meat over the egg and I'm gonna just lift it off my hand. Meatballs or nargisi kofte are ready to get baked. I have the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go put this in the oven. So the turkey meatballs are in. We're gonna give them 20 to 25 minutes at 400. If I feel they're getting brown early, 
I might reduce the temperature and then make sure they are cooked inside. Uh, everybody's oven is different. You know your oven well. If you are shallow frying or deep frying, my recommendation is to use a bit of breading and a lot more cornstarch. We'll get started on the gas stove and I'll see you in a minute. We have the turkey meatballs that are baking. We got our thick walled utensil really heated up now. I set it to medium high. Uh, cumin seeds and I give it just a quick second and roast them a bit. Cumin seeds taste really good when they're toasted without oil. That's the secret sauce. It's already getting there so I'm gonna add about half a cup of oil. Uh, I'm gonna add one star anise, about half of this mace. Uh, I'm gonna reduce the heat to really minimum. Now let's add uh, two cloves and a few whole peppers. I can already smell the flavor of star anise, mace, cumin, all you know getting extracted. Now my stove is at the lowest flame but that oil has gotten hot enough that it is going to extract the flavors but it doesn't have to get burnt. Okay. All right now time to add the bay leaves. If I would have added bay leaves early on they would have gotten burnt right so we gotta add it slightly later all right i prefer the flavor of ginger and garlic intact in my gravy that's why we'll start by adding onions first caramelize them and then add ginger and garlic so yes let's go ahead and add the onions Increase the heat a little till they start getting brownish and that's when you can reduce it back. The onions are starting to get translucent, okay, and we want to be able to saute them till golden brown. So it took about 12 to 15 minutes of low heat sauteing for the onions to reach this level. As you can see the onions are in a perfect golden brown color and at this time we are going to remove some of the whole spices. It is also time to add ginger and garlic. As you can see the meatballs are cooking really nicely. Let's add green chilies and the tomatoes. And now we will add salt, amchur, coriander powder, red chili powder and the meat masala. The choice is yours on how much you want to add depending on your liking for spices. So the tomatoes have been cooking for about 10 minutes. You can see the meatballs are nicely done and they're ready to go into the sauce once the sauce is ready. So we're getting very close to completion. You can see, you know, the oil has separated from the gravy. Let's check what the flavor is. Mm. Amazing. And here's what happened. I got a piece of that ginger in my mouth, right? 
And if we had set that ginger in before the onions got caramelized, uh, it would have basically assimilated and it was just mixed completely. And that's the difference between a butter chicken curry and a curry like this, for example, uh, what we call in Hindi khada. So this is more, texture is more, you know, lumpy instead of a smooth plain gravy. But it's still lacking a little bit of salt. So about half a, a, a teaspoon of salt, well, almost a full teaspoon. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the meat masala. Let's give it a whisk. So use your gentle hand because you still have those chili peppers that are, you know, full intact. So we don't want to break them. What else can you add in here? In my opinion, you could actually add a little bit of bell peppers or like we call it capsicum in India, but add them at this stage. Don't add them at the start, otherwise they'll get soggy. And you know, what you want is you want contrasting flavors and textures and everything being smooth and well cooked. Uh, contrasted with that bell pepper that's just steamed uh, is gonna give you a very nice flavoring. Perfect. Now we're gonna do a bit of reconstitution here. We're gonna add a little more, almost like half a cup of water we have added so far. And now you see it starts flowing well, right? And this is what you were looking for. Okay, it's been there for about five more minutes and we're gonna just give it a quick whisk. I'm gonna add a little bit of cream and our sauce is ready. We're gonna pick each one of these one by one and place them. You can see it's starting to bubble. So I'm gonna cover it back up and let that moisture soak in. All right, so I think it's finally ready. Let's pop up and see what we get. Whew, nice. So you look at the crispy turkey meatballs on the top and all the juices have probably been soaked by the turkey inside. I think it's ready to try. But before we try this, we need to move this to the other gas stove and simmer it while my wife is uh, gonna make some paratha. Hundred percent freshly cooked meal. There are no preservatives in this, guys. Pure meat, pure vegetables, spices. Hundred percent whole wheat flour. Nice. That's what a perfect paratha is supposed to be like. Fully puffed up. Nargisi kofta with plain paratha. So we have the Nargisi kofta curry ready and it is being served with my favorite which is plain paratha and I'll just start off with the paratha and show you look at how amazing it is just opens up and that's how we used to you know would basically eat it right off the stove right my mother would call me would go and she'll put it on the plate and be so hot so the way to you know just the way you open your popcorn bag and release the heat that's exactly how we used to heat and uh, release the heat and it become easy to eat this here is pickled carrots pickled ginger uh, pickled onions and pepper i have another video the links in my playlist subscribe to my channel if you want to know how to make that pickle uh, vegetables uh, there is a short video on that all right so now for the tasting what we're going to do is I'm going to try to remove the garnishes and open it up so you can actually see what's in the 
middle and I'm going to just quickly separate that out and if you look what beautiful egg and turkey mints together make the Nargasi Kofta. Uh, I'm going to taste it now so we'll start off with just the turkey and a little bit of sauce and I know it's going to just melt in my mouth man. Mm. Documents, I absolutely love documents and this is just amazing. I think the key to this dish is to try and see how a full bite of it with paratha is gonna taste like. I'm gonna go our Indian style, which is, you know, take a piece of roti big enough that you can sort of make a little cup out of it. And I'm gonna break the egg and the turkey piece. And I'm gonna take a bit of the sauce, yeah. I'm going to try this. Mm. Perfect. And I'm going to, you know, cover the bite with this pepper that's sorted with the onions and the tomatoes. And really yum. Yeah. And probably a bit of carrot. Mm. Excellent combination. So, I hope you enjoyed watching. Please do subscribe to my channel and let me know if you'd like me to make something special Indian. I cook Indian food, I cook Thai food, I just cook what I like, you know. I'm not a trained chef, uh, but I have a passion for cooking and making it for my family. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you and bye bye.